And now your host for this evening, the Bottles. Okay, I'm going. One, two, three, four. By this point, I'm sure you're aware of the Peter Jackson Beatles documentary, Get Back. The documentary charts the creation of the legendary album, Let It Be, using the helpful framing device of days being crossed off a calendar, leading to the band's famed rooftop concert. For decades, the final word on the Beatles' breakup has been the infamous recording sessions for Let It Be. The reality, it turns out, is not quite so simple. It's going to be such an comical thing, like in 50 years' time, they broke up because Yoko sat on an M. The cinema verite approach turns viewers into a fly in the wall, in the studio, with the frickin' Beatles. Like for the dedicated fan like me, it's a treasure trove of revelations. The sessions that led to the Beatles' final album release have long been considered to be the breaking point in the Beatles' eight-year journey together. That belief was fueled by the documentary Let It Be from filmmaker Michael Lindsay Hogg portraying disharmony and bitterness between the band members. Now Jackson's take isn't so much a remake as it is a more complete perspective. Morning, Morning everybody. Morning, camera. Another bright day. Morning, Morning camera. Jackson saw something in the vaulted studio footage that painted a very different picture of the Let It Be sessions than anyone outside of the Beatles organization had ever known. Now we're gonna take the Beatles, now be quiet. Oh, you recording our conversation? According to Get Back, this wasn't quite where the Beatles ended. You see, when they got together to record this album in January of 1969, they didn't know that they were barreling towards a breakup in 1970. It's just four emotionally complex individuals who've been through a lot together trying their damnedest to make their magical collaboration work. What could it be? Paul, something in the way she moves. What attracted me at all? Just say whatever comes in the head each time attracts me like a cauliflower until you get the word. You know? Let it be may have been built under duress at times, but Get Back illustrates how much of that process was actually a generous exchange of ideas between strong yet mutually respectful creative personalities. Looking for a what? What is it? Looking for a home to last. Looking for a blast from the past. There were aggravating factors during the recording that widened the cracks that were already there, but it seems the day-to-day -day work of building the next Beatles album was actually way more joyous and playful. Now don't get me wrong, Jackson's documentary doesn't shy away from the more difficult moments during the recording sessions. If anything, it drills into them as deeply as possible. A lot of people have been talking about part one's lightning bolt moment. It's where we get to see Paul McCartney like figuring out the foundation of Get Back for the first time. George and Ringo slowly wake up and just start like grooving along. It's, it's magical. And that's just like one of the lightning bolt moments scattered across the entirety of the documentary. A short while after the song Get Back is born, Paul and John like start getting into it. Like not really an argument so much as a friendly but firm exchange of ideas on how to approach a particular tune. And that ends with George kind of offhandedly letting them know that he's done for the day and he's not coming back tomorrow or any other day because he's quitting the Beatles. I think we should forget the whole idea of this show. Even that seemingly apocalyptic development ends up just being a stepping stone in the creative process. The documentary is just grinding to a halt. Grinding to a halt, I think it's taking off. <laughs> Here we go. George leaving ends up being the catalyst to one of the documentary's like few substantive conversations between Paul and John about their respective roles in the band. So George isn't gone long, but when he comes back, it's clear that it's brought them deeper into the creative process. The documentary reaches its climax in the third part, when the Beatles finally step out onto the roof of their Savile Row recording studio for their final live performance ever as a band. It's bittersweet, as it drives home the true purpose of the documentary as it exposes the inner lives of four truly legendary talents. But it's not gonna hit everyone that way though. Get Back isn't an easy thing to watch if you're anything less than a Beatles fanatic. This trilogy of Disney Plus documentaries more than earns its almost eight hour runtime, which is also almost as long as Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson's other giant saga. Man, the man just knows how to make really long things. And while Jackson has a very clear day-by-day -day structure that's easy to follow, it doesn't necessarily mean that each day is fully coherent or even narratively fulfilling. 
the commitment required to sit through even one part of Get Back is fairly daunting, and the hazy, misshapen pace makes it difficult to keep up with, especially if you're like dipping in and out. To be clear, this is absolutely what Beatles fans around the world want to see, but Get Back was originally conceived and apparently cut as a feature-length film. One wonders if a much shorter version of this is gonna pop up and replace Peter Jackson's three-part Lord of the Rings-sized epic. In my humble opinion, all those seven hours leading up to that electric moment, the Beatles on top of the roof at Apple Studios are absolutely necessary to sell Jackson's emotional climax at the end of the documentary. This is the Beatles, for better or for worse, in all of their energetic, tedious, gentle, violent, beautiful, and repulsive glory.